Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today I have with me James from The Odd Ones Out. Hello. And he, if you haven't seen his channel, does amazing animations, some of which are about when he used to work at a fast food joint called... Sewer Boy. So obviously if you go there and you order something, you get to choose what's inside. I am going to make a cake, but I'm going to make it to the custom order of what you would like inside. Ooh. So if you could have anything, you're making your own. Did you ever get to make your own? Oh yeah, yeah. We got a free six inch every time we worked there. There you go. So what would be your favorite things? What Start with the roll, okay. talk us through. Well... All right. <laughs> how how complicated can I make it? As complicated as you like. I want it to be a foot long. Okay, foot long. Foot long. Wait, that would be like a half a meter uh, long. <laughs> see, the thing is, Australians do understand American feet and inches. Oh, it's just the other way around. Americans don't get oh. Australian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, a foot long yes. on white, uh, and my favorite sandwich is a turkey Italiano. Which is, so it's salami and pepperoni, and instead of putting ham on, on the sandwich, you put turkey on it. Turkey, yes. Yeah. Do you have any sauces in it? Yes. Uh, mayonnaise and mustard, yes. and then oil, vinegar, and salt and pepper. What salad would you choose? This is where we get complicated for veggies. Uh, basically, lettuce, tomato, cucumbers, olives. That's easy so far, yeah. Oh, and I forgot the, the cheese, too. I like American mm -hmm. cheese. And not toasted. Not toasted. Wait, wait, no, is it toasted? I'm trying to remember, it's been so long. Let's I, do not toasted. Okay, That'll look not nicer toasted. as a cake. Otherwise, you're I right. made the cake and kind of toasted. Not toasted. That'd yeah, you're weird. right. That would be weird. <laughs> How would you toast a cake? You'd have to make it look like it was toasted, <laughs> but it would look nicer fresh. I'm envisaging mm -hmm. it looking fresh. Well, I'm, I'm imagining it as like a cold sandwich, as like a sandwich you take on the go. You know, like you go on a fishing trip and you mm -hmm. bring the sandwich. So lettuce, tomato, olives, cucumber, um, a little bit of jalapenos to give Ooh. it that spice. Uh, whenever I asked for jalapenos, there was just like, oh, you want just a mound of jalapenos? <laughs> but just like, like for a foot long, I guess, maybe like one for each bite, so it'd be like eight jalapenos. This is very specific. <laughs> eight jalapenos in it. Nate, I, that probably is too low. I'm probably lowballing it. Maybe 12. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. We've got the order. Mm -hmm. Now we've got to make the cake. Sorry for making so many ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's your order. <laughs> Step one, I decided to go to Subway and buy James's exact order. Yes, I took a list with me so I could see what it was supposed to look like. We've got the white roll and you can't even see any turkey. I assume there is turkey in there because I had to pay extra to get turkey instead of ham. There is turkey, there's just not much. I was expecting it to be more like this with lots of turkey, as advertised. But anyway, we've got the olives, the cucumber, tomato, mayonnaise, jalapenos, and heaps of pepper. It's just piled on top there. I think we'll use this as a bit of a guide, but make it look a bit nicer looking like they do in the adverts, rather than making it look like a squashed down roll where you can't see half the ingredients. Let's start with the salami. It's got lots of little bits in it, and as much as possible, I don't want to use fondant for the fillings. Some of them will have to, because they've got lots of detail, but this one I think we can get away with. Chop some nuts. I'm using a mixture of walnuts and almonds. You can use whatever ones you like. As well as the nuts, we'll need white chocolate and butter. And all the recipe quantities for these are listed on the howtocookthat.net website for you. And I'll link to that below, of course. Add the butter to the chocolate and melt that in the microwave. Stir it well to combine using a whisk works well for that and then add in some food coloring. I'm using a little bit of blue and some red to get that deep salami color. Once you're happy that it looks like the right color, you can go ahead and add in the nuts and stir them through. Pour that mixture onto some plastic wrap and fold it over on one side, seal it, then fold the other bit over hold it at both ends and spin it to make a roll of mixture. You'll need to place that in the fridge for several hours or I put mine in the freezer to make it set quicker. The pepperoni is a brighter orangey red color and to make that I'm gonna use marshmallows, white chocolate, and then a mixture of chopped nuts and dried apricots. You need to chop the apricots really fine so that we don't have big chunks of orange in the pepperoni. You can do that by hand or if you have a mincing attachment to your mixer, you can try that. I 
think by hand was much more effective at getting little tiny chunks. If you do it in the mincer, then you're gonna to need to chop it with the nuts anyway afterwards to break it into little pieces. Put the chocolate in with the marshmallows and melt that in the microwave and then stir in some food coloring until you get that right pepperoni color. Then add in the nuts and the apricots and stir that all through quickly before the marshmallows start to set. Wrap it up just like we did for the salami and place that in the freezer for a few hours to firm up. Moving on, next we need to make triangles of cheese. Grab some banana lollies and melt them in the microwave with a tiny bit of water and pour that mixture onto some baking paper. Add another sheet of baking paper over the top and roll it out using a rolling pin to about the thickness of your cheese. Once it's starting to cool, cut it into triangles and then you want to put that into an airtight container in the fridge to set. For the lettuce, we need some fine green bits, but again, I don't want to use fondant for this. So take some compound white chocolate, melt it and color it green using some oil-based food coloring, and then spread that between two sheets of baking paper until it's really thin. Push it out at the edges to make it wavy on the edges instead of straight. And then all you need to do is rip the top piece of baking paper off so you get two sheets of really thin chocolate. Scrunch up each one on the edges so that your lettuce is all crinkled and it's not flat. And then you just put that in the fridge to set. This is probably the easiest bit you need to make. Once it's set, just peel it off the paper to get strips of lettuce. That looks pretty cool, hey? For the sauces, let's make a white chocolate ganache, which is just cream and chocolate melted together and stirred well. We're going to split that into two bowls and for the mustard I'm going to add a little bit of brown. It wasn't yellow which I thought it would be but at the store it was brownie and then add some white food coloring to the one that we're making look like mayonnaise. For pepper I'm just going to finely grate some really dark chocolate. This is 90% cocoa so it's really dark and for salt I'll just use some sugar of course. When the tomatoes are in the roll, we can only see just the very edges of them, so we don't need to do all the details of the middle. I'm just gonna melt some red lollies in the microwave and add a bit of white and yellow coloring to get that tomato color right, and then pour that into some greased circle cutters and let it set. You can see a bit more of the cucumber, so we're gonna have to put some detail into that. So I'm gonna make these ones out of fondant. Roll a snake of pale green, then flatten it on one edge so that it looks like a teardrop shape. Cut that into three parts and wrap it in some deeper green, just adding each of your three bits there so that it's all in one bit. Then wrap that in lighter green. Trim the ends and again cut it into thirds and then put those three pieces together and we want to rearrange that and shape it so that we have a rough circle shape there. Round it out and add any spare of your light green around the outside of that. And then wrap that whole thing in the other green color that you have. And then finally wrap the dark green cucumber skin color around the outside. Put that in the fridge to firm up before you cut it and then slice it so you get slices of cucumber with that pattern through it. Take a straw and squash one side of it to make a teardrop shape and then use that to indent around the paler areas so that it looks like seeds. For the turkey, tip some white chocolate coloured with oil-based food colouring onto a piece of bench top that's been in the freezer. You can use marble, stone or corian for this, but it does need to be in the freezer overnight so it's really cold. Spread out the chocolate, then cut an oval of turkey meat. Loosen it from the base and I'm going to cut mine in half. The flat side can go towards the back of the roll and I'm just focusing on what the front side looks like. Lift up some areas of the edges so that it's not completely flat and it has a bit of a wrinkle to it. Now take some cocoa powder and using your finger, rub it along the edges so it looks like sliced turkey. Be careful just trying to get it right on the edge and not on the top of your chocolate. 
Can you believe that this is white chocolate? It actually looks like sliced turkey, but it's white chocolate. For the olives, roll out some grey fondant and cut small circles using a tiny cookie cutter. And then out of the middle, use a straw to cut out another circle. Paint around the edges carefully using black gel food colouring. If you get any on the top, you can just wash that off using a wet bit of paper towel, but try and get it just on the edges. Then give each one a few indents and bumps in the middle. They can get a bit uneven from being pitted. For the jalapenos, wrap some light green fondant in deeper green and slice off some pieces about the thickness that you want the jalapeno slices to be. Now, James wanted eight or maybe more jalapenos, so we need to keep slicing and make plenty of those. Cut a straw so you have about a third of it left and push it in at the edge of the lighter green and you'll need three cuts like that. Then take a skewer, put it into the cut and drag it down towards the center of the jalapeno. And again, do that in each of your cuts. Then add some tiny balls of that light green on top for the seeds. Grab your salami roll out of the freezer, unwrap it and slice it. And you can see all those little pieces inside look just like we wanted it to. Do the same with the pepperoni. Now, because this one has your marshmallows in it, if it squashes a little bit when you're slicing it, you'll just need to reshape it using your fingers so that you get a circle again. It's quite hard to cut this one thin. So if you want thinner slices, place it between two sheets of baking paper and roll it out flat and then just remove the baking paper. Now for the bread. Finally, we're up to the cake part of the cake. So for this, you're gonna to need to make a tray of my vanilla cake. Now you only need one tray per foot long sub that you want to make. Each foot long sub cake will serve 12 people. So if you want to serve more than that, just make more than one tray and more than one cake. Once it's baked, trim the edges and measure out a piece of cake that's eight centimeters or three and a bit inches by 30 centimeters or a foot long. Round out your corners and then do that again so you have another one the same shape and keep that end strip because you're going to need that piece. Trim the underneath edge off one of your pieces and cover that in buttercream. Then transfer it to a cake board covered in a subway paper. I asked the lady who served me for an extra piece of paper and she gave me one. So hopefully whoever serves you is helpful too. Cover that in fondant and smooth it out and around the cake. Use your little finger just to push it in around the base. Then cut off the extra fondant, leaving a little bit more than you think you need. And then just tuck that extra in using a spatula. If you don't have a spatula, you could just use a knife for that instead. Use some cocoa powder to brush along the outside of the roll so you get a bit of variation in the color there. And then take your other piece of cake and cover the top of it in buttercream. And then add that extra strip that we kept before and put it on top. Carve your cake down on an angle and down around, sloping at the edges, making it the shape of the top of a bun, rounding out the corners there. Then of course you want to cover that whole thing in buttercream. Once you've roughly got it covered, use a piece of acetate just to smooth it out so that it's nice and smooth. Cover the top in fondant and use your hands to smooth around it and make the fondant hug onto the cake. Then trim off the excess and tuck it in just like we did before when we were doing the other half of the roll. Brush the top of that in cocoa powder so it looks like it's been baked. And then add a few little creases into the fondant using the back of your knife so that it's not perfect. If it's too perfect, it doesn't look like it's a bread roll. Now let's assemble our Subway cake. This is it. This is when the sandwich gets put together and I'm hoping that it turns out amazing. Start with the chocolate lettuce. Now you wanna place that on the base all over it, paying attention to what you can see around the edges because that's what you're going to see. So it doesn't really matter what's in the middle so much. When we wanna layer it up because it's really fine, it will get squashed down by the other ingredients. So put more than you think you need so that once it squashes down, it looks right. 
add the lolly snake tomatoes into place and then the slices of cucumber all the way across. Now add in your olives and of course your jalapenos. How many did James want again? <laughs> We're gonna have to hide some of them in there. There is just so many, they're not gonna all be able to be on display. Pipe on some mustard and then some chocolate ganache mayonnaise. Oh, I was like, no, not mustard, but no, it's mustard. <laughs> and then sprinkle on the grated dark chocolate for pepper and some sugar for salt. Next, add the banana lolly cheese. I'm not sure how many slices you're supposed to have in a Subway, but mine only came with four triangles, so that's what I'm putting in. Then put the white chocolate turkey on top. Add the candy pepperoni, and then the salami on top of that. I know they don't have this, but I'm adding a bit more ganache on top at the back, just to help the lid of the cake stick in place. Then add your top piece of cake and give it a gentle squash down. And ta-da, we've finished a Subway sandwich cake made to the order of James from The Odd Ones Out. And wow, that cake looks so amazing. There was so much detail on like the cucumbers and the olives and the jalapenos. Ah, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> Let's cut it in half so that you can see what's inside. Compare it to a sandwich that I got just now. This is a BLT on flatbread. And then to freaking this, ah! Uh, at Suabway, we were called sandwich artists. This is a sandwich masterpiece. Ah, uh, thank you so much. This looks so good. Better than anything I could have ever created. Oh man. It's just like, my mouth is watering, you know? <laughs> Subscribe to How to Cook That for more crazy sweet creations. Click here to check out James's channel, The Odd Ones Out, and subscribe to him too. Make it a great week, and I'll see you on Friday.